Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Chad. Today I'm going to show you how to write a program in C++ that will actually count the vowels in a sentence that you type in and tell you how many vowels are in the sentence and which vowels are, are in the sentence. To start, we're going to use Visual Studio 2010 to write this program. I already have this open, so if you're not familiar on how to create a new project and write a program, what we're going to do here is I'll show you. You're going to go to File, click on File, drop down to New, slide on over to Project, click on Project. Once this window opens up, you want to make sure on the left hand side under Other Languages, click on this arrow here, the drop down, and then drop down to Visual C++. Once you do that, slide over here to the middle window, you should be Win32 Console Application C++. One last thing, we're going to create a name. We're going to call this Count Vowels. Once you type in the name uh, of your project, down here at the bottom, you're going to click on OK. Once you click on OK, this other window pops up. And down here at the bottom, we're going to just set some settings. Next, then on the next window, you're just going to click the box that says Empty Project. This way, we start with a new project and an empty project that's fresh with no code that's written yet we're gonna write all the code and I'm gonna show you how to do that once you click on the empty project click on finish once you click on finish the main window comes up the solution explorer should show that you've created a program called count vowels with a bunch of other folders if you don't see this uh, right here this solution explorer then come on over here to view right up here at the top click on view and view solution explorer and this window should pop up okay the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a CPP file in the source files folder over here where you see solution explorer you'll see where we created this program called count vowels when we did that there was folders that were automatically created you should have a source files folder if you don't see it you can actually click on these arrows here so underneath where it says source files folder you're gonna right click you're gonna slide on over here to add slide over one more time and then left click on new item when you do that this window pops up you'll see visual C++ we're gonna we're gonna create a C++ file CPP file stands for C++ we're gonna give it a name we're gonna call this main after you do create a name you're gonna come over here where it says add and add this file when you add it, you'll see that the main CPP file that we just created is going to be underneath source files folder, and then you're going to see it over here, the file we just created to write all our code. Now that you've got your main CPP file, you can start writing your code. But before you write your code, we're going to put in a framework here uh, that allows you to write code inside of main for the compiler. And this is just to get started. As you can see, I've already put this code in here uh, that has include IOStream using namespace standard, and I have my main with return zero and a semicolon. Now, I like to do is put this in here first because you're going to write all the code inside main for your program, whatever program you're going to write. So any program you're going to need this framework, and I like to build it as we go along. Uh, that way you can knock out any errors as we write the code instead of waiting to the very end to try and build it and find out you got errors on every line. So up here where you see at the top it says build, just click on build and write the first selection here is build solution. It's the same as F6. Click on that, it'll build it. If you look down here on the output, it'll tell you uh, it was build successfully and there's zero failed. So we have our framework to get started here and if you need to you could pause the video and type this in but this is what we need we're going to put all our code right inside of main uh, right here uh, to write our program next now that we have our framework in place we're going to start writing our code first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a character variable we're going to name that sentence and let's assign it a empty character blank character. Uh, we need to create another variable, an integer. We're going to name that uh, count. And let's also assign that, uh, since it's an integer, we're going to assign it zero, just to be on the safe side. 
that makes sure that we uh, don't have any garbage uh, assigned to the variable. After we create our variables, we're going to put out a statement to the user asking them to enter a sentence. All right. Uh, and we're also going to take in, we're going to use cn.get, which is we're going to get the character uh, for each letter in the sentence they enter. And we're going to use the, the variable that we created uh, above to extract uh, the sentence and get each letter from the sentence. Next, we're just going to add another C out statement. Uh, that's going to just show the word vowels so we know when we output the vowels we have a little message saying that the vowel here are the vowels uh, we also need to create a while loop and again we're going to use that variable uh, sentence and when the user enters in the sentence and presses enter we're going to say uh, not equal to uh, backslash n which is the same as the enter key and we're going to close that and when you do your while loop don't forget your flower brackets I call them flower brackets kind of shows you um, exactly where the while loop is going to be and we can open it up a little bit this is where we're going to put the code for the while loop and in the while loop we're going to need this cn.get, so you can highlight this cn.get uh, statement. Right click, come down here to copy, and then go inside the while loop. Remember, this is the beginning of the while loop, this is the ending, so right inside the while loop, we're going to right click and we're going to paste that cn.get. Um, also, make sure you align your code so it looks nice. Uh, and then after, after the cn.get, we're going to add a switch. And inside the switch, we're going to ask for each character to uh, convert to, to uh, uppercase uh, for each character. And again, we're going to use that um, sentence variable. Don't forget to close your parentheses. And don't forget also the switch needs uh, flower brackets. And that's the beginning of the switch, and here's the end of the switch. We can open that up a little bit. And we're also going to create a case, and single quote, first vowel is letter A, and colon, we're going to see out the variable, so see out sentence, which is the variable we created, and then output to the screen uh, a comma, um, so we have a comma after each uh, var variable that we output to the screen. Don't forget to close that. And then here we're going to use the count uh, variable that we use, and we're going to add one to it. So count plus plus, and don't forget to break break out of the first case. Now, now that we've created our first case, what we can do is we can copy the entire case that we just created, and copy it and right after the the whoops right after the first case we can paste it right and then don't forget to align your code and see this little highlight here uh, meaning that we already have an a so we're just going to change that to the next vowel which is e and we're going to continue doing that by copy and pasting each case, paste, align your code, change this to the vowel, um, say I, so we have A-E-I, and we're going to do that one more time, don't forget to align your code, change this uh, vowel to say O, and O, oh, these all have to be capitalized. Like I have these and let's try it one more time and we can change that to you and align the code and as we're getting our code is getting pretty long here so if you want to take a look at what I've created here this is our code 
we're going to build it to make sure we don't have any errors. So up at the top, build, build solution, and let that run. And look down here at the bottom. Again, we succeeded and zero failed. All right, so before we actually run this program and see if it works to see what it does or anything, uh, let's also put out, uh, use one more see out statement um, for the user, just to tell the user how many vowels there were. So there were a total of, and in between, in the middle of this sentence, we're actually going to slide out or slip out the, the count, the number of the vowels that were found. And you see vowels in your sentence. And backslash in, backslash in, that way we have uh, drops down a few spaces on output on the screen. And the same right here where it says in front of there, put backslash in, backslash in. That just means two enter keys give us some space on the screen when it puts it out. Okay, so what we do is now is we can just build this one more time, uh, build, build solution, and make sure down here we succeeded. And looks like we have no errors. So now we have all this code, we got no errors, we we've finished writing our program, we're going to uh, run it to see what happens. We're going to start without debugging. So deep, for this time we're going to go to debug and start without debugging. And this window pops up and now we can type our sentence and see if this program works. Let's see, I, let's see, I love CIS 231. It was fun. And oh, looks like it worked. Uh, see, there was a total of six vowels one, two, three, four, five, six. And there's the letter O, E, I, and A, and U. So six vowels. It looks like our program worked. That's it for my tutorial. Thanks for watching.